Hello and Assalamu alaikum everyone. This is Laiba Shah, master's student from NCBC Precision Medicine Lab of Sikhas University, Peshawar, Pakistan. And uh, my topic to present today was uh, using a network-based approach to prioritize microRNAs with putative roles in head and neck squamous cell carcinoma. Um, as the study indicates that it is mainly focused on the microRNAs, so let me tell you a little detail of microRNAs that what they are. Actually, we are already known, know, um, familiar with the coding RNAs which include the my messenger RNA, but the microRNAs are a class of small known coding RNAs called the microRNAs which are almost present in every species in the world and uh, they get synthesized inside the nucleus uh, with the help of polymerase 2 and 3 uh, from intergenic or intronic regions and then they transport it into the, into the cytoplasm where they get matured and they either uh, degrade the messenger RNA or they either uh, repress the translational mechanism of the uh, messenger RNA to play their uh, role in the gene regulation thus they are um, known to play a remarkable role in gene expression and they were uh, discovered uh, for the first time by uh, Gary Rokun and Victor Ambrose. Uh, let's see a brief history of microRNA discoveries and breakthroughs in radical science. So it was discovered for the first time in C. elegans, then in 2000 for, uh, for, uh, for first human, and then in beta chronic lymphocytic leukemia in 2002 for the first time in uh, particularly cancer, and then it went into the Clinical, uh, clinical trials for cancer therapeutics in 2012. Uh, my study design was based, uh, consist of these nine steps will, uh, which we will discuss further in detail uh, in coming slides. So as it was uh, a network based approach, so let me tell you a bit about what networks are. Networks are a physical pattern of two entities, uh, the nodes and the edges. The nodes are the physical objects and the edges are the connection between those nodes. So the problem I faced earlier was uh, data available uh, about microRNAs in head and squamous cell carcinoma and uh, it was just like a needle in a haystack. The, uh, I have gathered a list of uh, 64 microRNAs associated with HNSCC and then uh, I ha I've looked for their genes uh, with which they were targeting to study their neighborhoods. So, then uh, I have only selected the upregulated uh, microRNAs after uh, differential expression. Um, uh, so the upregulated microRNAs were 30 in number and they were targeting more than 5,500 genes. Even it is still a big issue to deal with. Then we have filtered the genes, uh, we have filtered the microRNAs on the basis of the interactions they had, like they, uh, the genes they were targeting. So. We have only took the microRNAs who were targeting more the tumor suppressor gene as it was, it was hypothesized that uh, the microRNAs with the, with the um, potential role in cancer must be, tar um, must be targeting some tumor suppressor genes. So uh, we have uh, looked for only the microRNAs which were targeting uh, more tumor suppressor genes. Then uh, we arrived at five potential biomarker candidates for um, as diagnostic or prognostic value um, so uh, they were these five microRNAs as you can see here and the uh, and they were they were the top five uh, biomarker candidates in uh, our study and um, they were targeting more the tumor suppressor gene the the blue one the blue nodes were uh, are the tumor suppressor genes and uh, these five microRNAs were mainly targeting more tumor suppressor genes then we have looked for uh, the number of uh, genes they were targeting uh, so the the pink bar represent the uh, top five candidate biomarkers and the number of genes they are targeting. Then we have uh, looked for their expression in uh, meal cancer database subtypes, and uh, they were showing similarity with other cancer subtypes, including esophageal squamous cell carcinoma, um, retinoblastoma, renal carcinoma, and laryngeal carcinoma. And then we have looked for the mutation frequency of the TSGs reported in head and neck squamous cell carcinoma and uh, targeting with those five candidate biomarkers. So uh, these were the graphs showing the results of those mutation frequencies. And uh, this table uh, briefly uh, tells us about the mu mutation frequency of those genes and the number of interactions they had with the TSGs. 
Uh, then we have looked for their sequences from uh, mere, mere base and then and their expression from from mere cancer base. Then we have uh, to look at the functional detail of those microarrays. We have performed their uh, um, function annotation uh, go analysis and. Uh, we have looked for the biological process, cellular components, and molecular functions in which those genes were involved. And they were uh, telling us significantly about their involvement in cancer. Then we have looked for the CAC pathway analysis of those genes. So they were mainly involved in the uh, pathways of cancer and in microRNAs of cancer pathways. Then we also looked at the expression profile in other cancer subtypes of those microRNAs, those five top microRNAs. And they were uh, reported mainly um, high at high expression in other cancer subtypes as well, apart from adenex squamous cell carcinoma uh, represented here in the red bars. Then we have also uh, undertook the survival analysis of those five microRNAs, and two of them were showing a very good uh, statistical uh, significant result. Um, the two include the HSA-MIR30 and HSA-MIR16 with the p-value less than 0 0.05. Uh, currently, we are, um, we are designing uh, small oligonucleotides anti-MERS against those top five microRNAs to check their efficacy in vitro in uh, patient-derived primary cell line at Precision Medicine Lab uh, to further validate them and to, um, and to look for their role in as a prognostic or diagnostic biomarkers. Thank you very much. These were uh, they were my um, acknowledgments, and uh, I would like to thank each one of them. Thank you very much.